to our friends as they um, share with our Torah. Our project, is, was on, our project was on Kriyat Yamasu. So we came up with this for Torah. Ever since we were small, we learned the story of Kriyat Yom Suf, happening by Nachshon ben Aminadab's bravery when he jumped in and split the sea. So you can imagine our surprise when we opened up a chumash and saw that there was no mention of Nachshon splitting the sea. In Parshat Beshalach, Parak Yod Dalid, Pasuk Chafalif, it says, Yet Moshe et Yado alayam vayalech Hashem et ayam baruch kadim aza kol alayla vayasem et ayam achurba vayibuku hamayim. The English translation for that is, Then Moshe held out his arm over the sea, and Hashem drove back the sea with a strong east wind all that night and turned the sea to dry ground. The waters were split. The Mafarshal argue about whether it was the eastern wind or Moshe the sea. A midrash is brought down in Gemara Sota. Two rabbis named Rav Yehuda and Rav Meir got into an argument about how Kriyas Yamsuf happened. Rav Yehuda explains that while the Jews were arguing about who should go into the sea and some were begging Moshe to save them from Nachshon ben, Nachshon ben Aminadab took the initiative to run into the water first. Moshe was dominating to Hashem while this occurred but by the time the water was up to Nachshon's chin, Hashem told Moshe to take his staff and spread it over the water, and that is when the sea split. According to Rav Yehuda, it was only one when Nachshon took the in in initiative and jumped into the water, showing his faith in Amuda that Hashem was willing to perform this miracle for B'nai Israel. This inspired the Jews and renewed their faith in Hashem and continues to inspire people today as we retell this story at the Pesach Seder. What makes this story so special and timeless is because it encourages us to trust Hashem no matter what situation we are in. It gives us hope as in Israel that if we are doing that, what is right, Hashem will always help us. This touches on our personal lives as students because sometimes it's hard to do what, what's right when no one else is willing to do it. I hope this story continues to inspire us as we grow older and serves as a reminder to always stand up for what we think is right even in the face, uh, face of adversity. Hashem said to Moshe, stretch your hand to heaven if you want to protect yourself, because I will make a huge plague. It will destroy everything in Egypt. Moshe stretched out his hand to heaven, and Hashem sent hail, thunder, and fire. That was the strongest hail since Egypt became a nation. The hail destroyed the crops, structures, and anything that was outside. Rashi says that a big part of the miracle is that opposites work together. In this plague, we see many examples of opposites of nature, normally in science, hot air rises and cold air sinks. But in this plague, the hot air sunk the cold, and the cold air rose. Another example of opposites was when Hashem made fire and ice cooperate with the hail. Usually the fire melts ice, the ice turns into water, and the water extinguishes the flame. We show, we show this by having hot tamales, which, which is a fire, instead of inside a faucet donut hole, and it crashed into the ground, graham crackers. In this plague, heat and cold together, work together for the will of Hashem. From this, we can learn that we can work with polar opposites. Like, fi like fire and ice work together even though they were polar opposites. Next time you are working with someone that is very different than you, think about how opposite, how, um, think about how your opposites treats Traits can help you do the right thing and help you work even better. In Egypt, 
send a message each family from the United States to put sheep blood on their door. Hashem knew that it was the Jews and did not kill the firstborn in the plague Makat Bechorot. Why do we need to put blood on the doorposts? Hashem doesn't need a sign. The Pasuk says, touch the hotel and the, and the two sides on the doorpost with some of the blood on the face. All, all of you let no man go out of the door of the house until morning. Rabbeinu Bachir says, put the blood on the doorway to show that they did Hashem's command and deserve to live and to show that they were loyal to Hashem. The blood didn't prevent the plague, but those who slaughtered the lamb, the injection God, showed their faith in Hashem. They were righteous and deserved Hashem's protection. This teaches us that nothing bad can happen when you listen to what Hashem says. On Tehillim, Perak Samach Ayin, it says that when Hashem decided to give the Israel the Torah on top of a mountain, all of Hashem's creation turned anew. Every single mountain wanted to be the chosen mountain to have the Torah given on it. Mount Tabor, a very tall mountain, said, I'm the tallest mountain. I should be the one to have the Torah given on it. Then Mount Carmel spoke up. But I'm the most beautiful. I should be the one that has the Torah given on me. Soon, all the mountains had joined in with their own reason of why they should be the one that to have the Torah given on them. Only Harsina stayed quiet. Harsina was thinking, why should Hashem chose me? I'm just a tiny, ugly mountain. Then Hashem spoke, I have chosen which mountain will be the mountain that I will give the Torah on. All the mountains waited impatiently. Hashem boom. Harsina will be the mountain on which the Torah will be given on. All the mountains, yet even Harsina, were wondering why Harsina was the chosen mountain. Hashem continued, the reason I chose Harsina is because Harsina was the only mountain who didn't brag. Although Harsina is not tall or beautiful, on the inside he is the best of all because he didn't brag. This is an important lesson in our own lives because we can learn that even if you are focused on your outside appearance, on your outside appearance, it's the inside that matters. It's your meetup that matters and that is why Harsina got chosen to be the one to have the Torah given on. Our presentation shows that what's inside is more important than what's on the outside. At first glance, it may look like we just have plain cupcakes with plain white frosting. Nothing too impressive at all. But if you look, if you lift up one of the cupcakes, it will reveal a colorful display of bright fruit, which is hidden inside the cupcake. Sometimes even the outside is not too impressive. It is important to get to know or see something that may be hidden at first glance. Often, humble people or humble mountains are difficult to recognize at first. We need to investigate and get to know them better to find out who they really are.